all right? I'm doing really good, man. Doing really good. Um, just been like busy with consults, you know, solving a lot of problems with guys. Uh, the whole apex mindset thing is building, you know, so yeah. I got to working on the course and just, you know, working on the business and that's, nice. that's been it. Yeah. The business nice. side of, you know, helping dudes out. So it's been yeah. pretty cool, man. Really cool. How about yourself? What's new? Uh, it's all good, mate. Really quite a busy week. Uh, I'm working on a course myself actually, which, uh, kind of fortuitously is actually about approaching and about the art hmm. of converse, uh, the art of conversation on the approach. And cool. I'm, I'm doing a, um, <clears throat> I was writing a PDF to go with it. So I've got a PDF. It's about 15,000 words. And I was kind nice. of, I was kind of procrastinating, you know, and, but I really cracked on with it this week and it's now finished. So Good. it's quite exciting because that will be ready to go quite soon. So that's awesome. Good. Yeah, it's it's <laughs> it drives me a little crazy sometimes, like on the rule zero thing, because like some people ask, like, well, who should we talk to about game and pickup? And then dudes will act like stumped. And I haven't been on those shows that's happened, but I'm thinking to myself, you got Troy right here on the rule zero panel who literally yeah. does pickup. How about say Troy? <laughs> no, <laughs> let's say, buy Troy stuff. <laughs> exactly. Like, exactly. You have a whole thing. I don't know. It's like what you do. Anyway, it's just I thought that's funny. <laughs> yeah, ex exactly, man. I mean, you know, obviously, like a lot of people, I, I sort of stray a bit more into the, you know, the red pill stuff, the social comment stuff and all of that. But I mean, my bread and butter was always just, just dating because that's all I wanted to do, basically, you know. Right. Yeah, that's kind of how I mean, I got started with this stuff too. a bit was, well, trying to figure out, I mean, it was trying to figure out dating, then I got into like that terrible, not good relationship, you know, with yeah. the blue pill paradigms. So then I was trying to figure out how to navigate that and then got control of that, got out of that. Then I was figuring out basically getting girls again. And yeah. then from, from there it was getting girls to helping dudes out who are destroying their lives in the military. And then that kind of just kept going but yeah you know the the base of it for me too was you know pick up in, in game and stuff so it's kind of cool yeah. like we'll be able to talk about um those things and i like having you on because in different people on uh, and i'll say this for like the sake of the audience too so what you'll notice is like there's a reason they call it pick up artistry mm. <laughs> and not pick up science you know there's two there's too many variables when you're dealing with two individuals coming together so mm. you have a data set of things that'll work um, for different reasons, some things might work better than others, but like there's certain things I can get away with, with the way I look and the way I present maybe than somebody else, you know? Yeah. So there's certain, you know, domains and in certain personalities where certain types of things will work, uh, the psychological concepts and the concepts of how we connect socially are all going to be <clears throat> a bit more scientific, but the actual, when it comes down to techniques, like techniques can vary. So there's certain things I might teach or whatever. That's not what you teach and vice mm. versa. But that doesn't mean that they're bad. Like it, it, I like, so I like having these conversations because you'll probably have some stuff I don't do, or uh, maybe I even haven't even thought to do, you know what I mean? Yeah. And that's, and that's good benefits everybody. You know what I mean? It doesn't mean it's not good or whatever. Like when I get in a consult with a guy, I've had guys like in a wheelchair or guys with, you know, a stutter, for example, and they have a real hard time communicating. My way of having to teach them how to pick up on women is going to be different than a guy who's, you know, 24 year old guy who's in shape, maybe, or, you know, somebody who's more physically capable or whatever, you know? And so, yeah. yeah. It's definitely yeah. a movable, it's definitely a movable feast, isn't it? Cause it very much depends on the sort of guy you are, where mm -hmm. you are to some extent, the sort of girls you're targeting. It's, it's not a one size fits all. No, no, definitely not. So I think I'll start off just with a little bit of uh, text game stuff. Mm -hmm. I got a, um, this guy, uh, so he's one of my clients. So I've been helping him out and um, share my screen. And hmm. no, I don't know why it's not. Like, so the share screen button now is not. This is what I mean, bro. Like, I don't know how to work shit. Like, it says cancel. I can do that. Or I can not share. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> That's weird. Yeah, dude. That's weird. It's normally... Uh, it really it, lets me do it. I don't know what the yeah. fuck is going on. Oh, there we go. Stupid. I got it now. 
<laughs> I, I didn't click on the fucking Jesus. All right, here we go. So we're going to talk about this. So, um, so this dude, well, just to do a little quick intro on this here. Um, so this guy, uh, he, this guy's a high value guy, right? Like he's got a PhD. I'm not going to dox where he's at. He's in Europe though. And, um, you know, he's like a younger, like in his thirties, you know what I mean? And so he's to kind of give an intro here. He was, um, on some dating apps. I had him get on seeking arrangements too. So the reason why I'll have someone do seeking arrangements isn't to pay for sex. It's because a lot of girls on there are there to meet higher value guys who can create and more or less have that experience with them, you know, go on. So a 21 year old girl whose peer group is a bunch of drunk college students or dudes playing video games all day. She wants to meet up with a guy who's a decade or more older than her. That's going to take, you know, take her on a boat or take her someplace cool, you know, have more of a little bit of, of a lavished experience. Not, it's not necessarily that that dude's going to pay for sex. Um, it's strategic pluralism that works itself out right there in this app. So if a dude leads with money and favors and stuff, then she'll move it right into, yeah, well maybe she should buy me a gift or trying to get an allowance for from a guy. But if he doesn't do that and is basically like, yeah, I'm just here for a connection. And a lot of the girls on the other apps are, you know, immature or whatever. So and that's how he presents it. Then she'll see him as high value and she'll, she'll, she won't put him in the, pay for it category so to speak if yeah. she thinks he's thinks he's attractive a lot of the guys on seeking are like not attractive guys so if you increase your smv and have good photos and stuff you can slay on uh on seeking and have normal like dating casual relationships with girls where you're having lots yeah. of sex and having a lot of fun so yeah. that's that's where he was at he saw this girl both on tinder and on seeking um i'll put another point about that is a lot of times on tinder they're just there for the attention and you'll notice like some of some of my guys will talk to try to talk to or engage a girl on Tinder and she's very cold and aloof. And then when she sees him on seeking, her perception of his value is higher because he's on seeking and then she can see stuff like income brackets and things like that. And so she just perceives this guy is better than the Tinder guy. It's interesting how it works that way for some of these girls. But anyway, so she, he starts off, he tries to open her. Um He's uh what what what's better talk here or on Tinder? We already have a conversation started there, unless I'm talking to your twin sister. So he saw her on he 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 op they opened it was like a quick like one two comment exchange and nothing happened. Then he sees her again on Tinder. Now this or I'm sorry on seeking arrangements. This girl is like smoking hot. All right, so she's like like nine and a half. Okay. <laughs> and so I don't want to dox her photo or anything, but she's pretty, pretty good looking. So I have them reopen her. Um, so that's one thing that I noticed is a lot of guys in red pill community are like, Oh, if she doesn't have genuine desire. You know, if she doesn't you know, jump on your, you know, your nuts, like on the first text or whatever, then the next her. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well you, you want genuine desire, but you are, she doesn't even know this guy yet. Right. So like, so you, yeah, you have to build that desire a little bit. She has no idea. She's getting a hot girl like this is getting literally 30, 40 people in her inbox almost daily. Yeah. You've got to do a bit of work. You've got to do a little bit of work up front. Mm -hmm. It's not extreme, but you've got to do something, right? Because otherwise, yeah. you know, you've got to create well, those opportunities. Right. And it's about being outcome independent, not taking it personal. Now, if you had, if you had sex with this girl and then she was ghosting him and stuff, well, that'd be different, but he has never met her. So to, to not reopen her or to attempt to reopen her even a couple of times, I, I think you're losing opportunities because I've, and this is an exact example of that. Um, cause we're talking about openers. I wanted to sort of hammer this point home. So, um, cause he reopened her, like, this is, I think his second, is he it was he, re he opens her three times on two different apps before he gets anything. So he opened her on Tinder. She had like responded, then ghosted him. He opened her here, and I, you could see the timestamp here is like 15 days. Like she didn't say anything. Like she just ghosted him. Okay, and so um, he actually he upped his uh, he changed his profile around because his picks weren't very good. And he put up better picks. That makes a huge difference. So then he noticed, because you can see on Seeking, when someone looks at your stuff. So we noticed that she was looking. So he calls her out. I have her open her again. He goes, call you looking. That's okay if you don't want to respond. I'll keep talking to your sister. <laughs> kind of playing off the other thing, like that was she was on Tinder. 
So now look at her response, right? So, haha, I like your humor. Sorry for not replying. How how were your Easter holidays? Are you from? And then blank where they're actually at right now. Yeah. So that's a that's a triple text that demonstrates high interest by changing his photos. There was something that was she was not attracted to him initially, or she would have had more of a conversation, or possibly she was dating somebody else, right? But then she sees the photo change, notices it, says, okay, well, wait a second. Takes another look at the guy's profile, realizes he's attractive. And so then she starts thinking about it. And now she's demonstrating interest. When, you, when a girl triple texts like that, that's a really good sign of investment. Um, so then he says, yeah, from Greece, originally from, uh, uh, but originally came to where they're at for my PhD um, years ago and never left. So now he's dropping a DHV, right? Came here for my PhD. That's a demonstration of value. You question. Oh, interesting. In which field? I study in Germany and moved to. All right. So she talks about her stuff. You know, study in Germany, moved there for internships. It's wonderful here. I'm going to apply for jobs in that area soon. And then so he says, he replies, distance learning and software engineering. It was quite the experience. And he goes, it's wonderful, huh? Top three. Uh, top three you like about the place they're at go. So she replies in engineer. That's very attractive. And like a, a smiley face. He was like, he came back to me. He was like, dude, I think this chick's messing with me. This isn't, this isn't attractive. What is, what does she mean? It being an engineer, software engineer is not attractive. I'm laughing my ass off because I'm like, bro, if I said I was a software engineer to a girl, she would think that was attractive. All right. <laughs> the reason why is because, because I'm attractive and I'm engaging her in an attractive manner and I'm demonstrating social skill. Right. Yeah. And I have yeah. status and all, and I have a good, I, I look good in my photos and those things. So I would be attractive if you were an unattractive software engineer should never say that. And so that was a good point. Guys like could get down on themselves sometimes somehow. So she goes, my top three in the area is, and now she drops, she name drops this, the place or at a bunch. So I had to block it all out, but it doesn't matter. She mentioned three things she liked. So she's now demonstrating investment, answering his questions, asking, mm. you know, him questions, which is what I'm, I'm more or less looking for. And yeah. by talk, Yep. And so by talking about the things that they're inter, you know, that they like, right. Um, and, and they're also getting into a little bit into the fantasy of what it would be like to be with each other in these areas. That's kind of, mm. you know, building a, 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 a imagery. So like talking yeah. about vacations, travel, geography, future projection, good. future projection. Right. Exactly. So he does drop a, a compliment here, which is fine. Um, we'll talk about compliments in a minute because there's some different theories on this. Mine is I, I, I make a girl usually earn them. Um, but some guys are very successful starting off with them. I, and I'll, we can explain why that is. I know I, the reason why is usually they're, they're, they're giving the compliment from a position of power or high SMV, you know what I mean? Mm. So they can start off that way. But anyway, so she, he goes, you seem classy. That makes sense. I know the spot by the lake. And so then he names his three. And so the way he, illustrates it i know the spot by a lake that's one of my favorites see he's illustrating it in a way that can build her like oh there's a spot here by this lake like what would it would it be like you know my favorite yeah. uh, skate park is number two so this dude is a skateboarder and a phd that's pretty <clears throat> hot right <laughs> so. yeah yeah unusual combination <laughs> right right and then I'm and I'm busy in another DHV. How about I surprise you? And then he goes, but he goes, how about I surprise you with number three? I'm busy this weekend with a ski trip. When are you free next week? So now he moves right to the close. Skill here. She says, I have no plans except for week during uh, work during the week and Sunday. So Saturday, maybe. So she drops out Saturday. Uh, he says, and then she said, didn't you, didn't you skate? Didn't know you skate. That's pretty cool. So I'll, I'll stop screen sharing this. We can talk about it. Um, whoop. All right. Am I not screen sharing? Okay, good. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, all right. So sweet. So yeah, so we can just sort of uh, chat about that. So that was, um, any end so here's the, the results were they, he, he ended up meeting up with her on a Saturday, stuck to logistics, didn't over text during the week or anything. <clears throat> they met up went really well. They're going out a second time. Uh, I think this weekend maybe, or 
you know, whatever. So they're going out at another time. I haven't gotten the update from there, but it's basically she's gonna end up coming over. So yeah, he's gonna he's gonna smash this girl, and this girl's like a nine and a half, dude. <laughs> this no. girl's smoking. Yeah, nice. I'm like, nice. nice job, bro. So Mate, that's awesome. Yeah. That is a, yeah. what a testimonial for your for your coaching. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, man. You know, well, and I wanted guys to see it too, like. Cause I think guys get caught up in rules and techniques, you know, and they're, mm. they're missing the social connection. Like, again, there's a reason why it's an art, you know, like I say, I usually, I don't usually start off like in a cold approach with a, with a compliment, mm. but then I, I break that rule sometimes too. Yeah. Yes. It's, uh, it depends on the social, it depends on the social connection I'm making with that person. And that's where I think guys get a little bit wrapped up, especially in this space. You got a lot of guys who are very analytical uh, oftentimes very smart, very intelligent, you know what I mean? And, and then they're, they're, they're more linear in their thinking. They don't know how to jump into that girl's brain and see mm. what she's thinking and feeling and, and learn how to connect with that, which is our challenge, you know, as uh, coaches, I mean, you got guys that come to you too all the time for help. And that's the challenge is to, yeah. you know, give them a set of things that they can do and follow, but also, so they're not stuck on those things too, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah, for sure. Yeah. For sure. Yes. Yeah. So, so yeah, so he, I wanted to show that one because he had reopened her three times. It took him a third time in, in, in some adjustments and he didn't care. Like there wasn't any neediness when he did it. It wasn't like he reopened her the next day. It was several days later, you know, he realized she didn't say anything. So he figured, okay, you know, and, and he it was clever when he, when he did it too. It wasn't like, oh, Hey, you know, you haven't talked to me or I didn't hear back from you. What's going on? It wasn't anything like that. It was just, he made a joke about it. He was like, so should I, uh, you know, should I continue trying to talk to you here? Should I just talk to your sister or whatever? Cause whatever that little joke there didn't care, you know? Mm -hmm. And then, mm -hmm. then she engaged him. Now she might've not engaged him, but that's fine. He's got a roster of other women. <laughs> he's going down the line with yeah. and, and matching with and going on dates with. So she just would have been the one to miss out quite frankly. And yeah that's a bit of the numbers game thing, but he, I thought he moved into a, a, that close really smoothly when he said, you know, yeah. yeah, absolutely. And it's good not to be chit chatting on the apps for too long as well. Right. You know, you've got a, you've got that interest, you've got a little bit of back and forth and then you want to be bringing it in for the close. And he did that yeah. really well. I think so. So we got, I don't have super chat ability, so I just kind of look at the chat for questions. So uh, Chris mm. asks, is, is this too much chit chat? I don't think so. Um, mm. So the it, it, it reason there's a difference between, I would like to know your opinion, Troy, but mm. there's a difference between like the old school way that I learned where I kept the chat to like almost zero because I day gamed or I met the girl in person. So I met her in person already had like a good five minute or so exchange, maybe even had a drink with her or hung out with her for a little bit. So there was a, there was an in-person social connection that happened right there. And then it was like, oh, cool. Well, let's let's catch up. I'll, I'll give you a ring next week, and we'll 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 meet up and do this again, kind of a thing. And 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 we do that close. And so I'd have a usually a number close. Um, I got into social media closes later when that became more acceptable way of communicating through DMs. But you know, even before that, it was a number close. You know, you remember the old days, right? Yeah, you yeah. Do the old number close, man. And then and then it was keep the text short and set it up the date, right? Well, yeah. the, pro the problem is, and you guys can go back into my previous videos I've done on uh, the kind of the format of what you're doing with texting and stuff, is that you're meeting these girls for the first time online. There is no social connection there. So there has to be a little bit more of a back and forth that happens to sort of build that connection. And the connection mm. you're building is the fantasy. And that's the important thing. So my format is like the opener, you want curiosity right away. And then fear with curiosity, you want to start to build that investment in that fantasy. So where she's more curious about you, she starts offering information, which is an investment, maybe correcting like your mistakes. If you say like, oh, that looks like this place. Oh, no, that's not that place. It's this place. That's actually an investment when she corrects you. You know, so she's interested. It, it sounds weird, but it's you do that with nationality too. Like, oh, you look like you might have a little German. No, I don't have any German. Really? Well, what is your name? You know, so then she's correcting you. All right. Well, yeah, she's yeah. Really investing now in that conversation. And then she gets to a point where she's asking questions of you too and curious about you. 
now that's demonstrating more investment. And then notice how like in that example, the words he was using were, he was talking about things that would give you a little bit of imagery of the future and that fantasy of what it would be like to be with this guy. So drop really like subtle, you know, DHV is, yeah, I came here for my PhD and just stuck around. Oh, one of my favorite places is a skate park, but I really like this place, you know, that a, a quiet place that I know of by the lake, you know, like it, it's like, it's this visual imagery of like, okay, like this guy's really interesting. He does cool crap. I'd like to do cool crap with him, you know? And then when he says it, so you build that, you have to spend a little time to do that sometimes. I mean, I've yeah. seen some tech spanner go on even for, a week or two, I don't recommend it. You know, the guy might try to close. She might kind of curb him a little bit and then he just sort of backs off, but then she reopens them. You know what I mean? Then it goes back yeah. again. And you know, so there's a little bit of back and forth. Now that happens because she's trying to, to, to make her selection. But what, what mm. do you think? Right. With uh, no, I, I, I agree with what you said, because I think you're right. If you've met in person, that's the first meeting you met in the daytime or you met in a club or a bar or something and you've got a number, then some of the work's already been done because you've already, and this is the thing with texting when you meet in person, because then the texting really in most circumstances should be fairly brief. It should be just like, Oh, Hey, great to meet you the other day, blah, blah, right. blah. And then maybe a couple of backwards and forwards. And then listen, we should go for drinks. I know this cool place Wednesday at 8 PM, whatever. So but 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 yeah, when you meet somebody online, unless she just happens to see your pictures and she just thinks you're amazing and she, you're just totally her type, there's you've got to have a bit of build up. You've got to do something to attract her, and the pictures are obviously the probably the most important part of it. But right. if you can create some banter going backwards and forwards, and like you say, playing into that fantasy as well, um, that can really up your chances of her coming out to meet you. And uh, as well, actually, even with day guy daytime approaches for example say you met a girl when you were traveling and then you know you're or you're out of town for a week and then you come back and you, you you're texting her and and you're not going to be able to meet up very quickly you might want to do a bit more backwards and forwards in that situation and again building it up and you can get a bit sexual on these texts as well just little hints yeah. little innuendos get her excited mm -hmm. keep her keep her warm so that she wants yeah. to meet up when you guys can get together yeah nice no that's a good uh good good advice there especially building that sexual tension or having that sexual undertone is good too there wasn't yeah. a ton of that in this last exchange but that's okay you know what i mean because they got the yeah but sometimes if it if it starts to go on a little bit longer to start dropping some of those little flirty comments and when you have an opportunity do you know what i mean to open that stuff up that's i think that's yeah. pretty good yeah. well a lot of the time it's just if she says something that you can yes. misinter misinterpret as being sexual double entendre things right yeah, yeah then you could just yeah. do a little you could just do a little oh really or like a wink face or something like exactly. that you know she says oh I, I i i like a really hard workout in the mornings or something something like that you know you can you could just draw attention to the sexuality of it the only right. the difficult and that's probably quite a crude example but you know the sort of thing i mean the mm -hmm. only the only issue with that is you've also got to be careful not to go too far because you don't want to then look like a, cr a crazy pervert who's got just got a permanent hard on and then she blocks you right so it's <laughs> yes. like with all of these things it's got to be balanced yep you know what i find too is good um with that is to is to pivot so like yeah. you'll drop one message of yeah you know i like a i like a good workout in the morning too wink sometimes at night maybe even in the middle of the day yeah so pivot to something the non-sexual another message so then it's like she has a choice now in this conversation like her brain splits a little bit do i want to comment on the sexual comment or ignore it right if i leave mm. it as a sexual comment it draws attention to that tension that, that there's a tension there if she's sexually closed and i miscalibrated then she's maybe not going to respond at all a ghost or maybe start to think i'm a creep or something but yes. if she's right but if she's um, sexually open, of course, she'll play right off of it. But when I give her that pivot point, it softens it a little bit. So then a lot of yeah. times they're like, oh, like they'll comment on it. Like, you like, like, oh, like, I don't know who knows what they say like, oh, oh, really? Or whatever or something, you know, so you seem very active or whatever, but gives me a wink and then goes into my pivot. 
So then, mm. like, yeah, but I really like this area too, or whatever, you know. Yeah, or talk about her job it's or something. A, so yeah, it's a real balancing act. I mean, this happened to me a while back. I met this girl through Day Game, and we got on pretty well. And I could tell that she was just kind of interested, you know. And it was all pretty smooth, smooth sailing. And then I dropped something. I can't remember what it was, but it was it wasn't even that that bad. But it was just a slightly sort of sexualized comment nothing mm -hmm. her, nothing like outrageous just a tiny bit and then she yeah. stopped replying she stopped replying to the messages and i was like well that's a bit crap you know and the only way that i was able to reignite it was i just happened to see her walking down the street again and yeah. i don't normally do this but i saw her walking down the street again just by coincidence and in london that's pretty rare right because you, you don't yeah. always see people again but i just happened to see see her walking down the street and i was like oh should i approach her again and I thought it's maybe it looks needy. And then I just thought, oh, sod it. Who cares? I'm just going to go and speak to her. So, so I ran after her and stopped her. And um, and and, and she she like smiled. And I said, oh, you stopped texting me. She goes, yeah, yeah. She said, I, I, there was just something you said. I thought you were, you know, you're a little bit. Um, well, I think she she meant creep, but I can't remember the exact word she used. You know. <laughs> Um, and I was like, no, no, listen, listen, seriously, I'm a very innocent English boy. I'm an English gentleman. It's all good. <laughs> and um, and it was fine. And then she she started responding again. And then we, we ended up going out and, and everything else. So um, but that I was very lucky in that instance, because I just happened to meet her again. If I hadn't met her again, then it, it would have been dead. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah, that's good. Um, and, and sometimes like that's a good, uh, you know, piece of, you know, kind of information there. Like sometimes I. I won't close or even won't recommend a guy closes if the buying temperature is not high enough. Mm. If he know if he knows he'll see her again. Now in your case, you didn't that time, but you know, if and you probably, you know, you, you would have, you had no problem closing right up front, but then you saw her again, but it's like, sometimes like, for example, girl at the gym, that's a good one. You know, you're going to see this chick again, right? Or she works in a place like, you know, bartender waitress you might want to get that buying temp up a little bit, you know, you're yes. gonna, you, you know what I mean? Versus just get blown out right from the initial. But of course, if you're doing day game and you'll probably never see this girl again, like in London, go ahead and get blown out. You know, it's always, uh, it's, or, or, or get, or get it to happen, whichever. But I mean, you can take, yeah. take more risk if you know you're never going to see. I it. think that's a that's a really interesting point, and that's something that I've done in the past. Because if, say, there's a girl who is working in a coffee shop, and I go in the coffee shop every day, then right. I'm probably not going to try to close with that girl on the first on the first time because it looks a bit uncalibrated. Do you know what I mean? It's it's, yes. it's sort of like a oh hi, let's go out for drinks. You know, it's a little bit too much. What sure. I find better in those scenarios is you go in, then a couple of days later you're in again. There's a bit of a cheeky wink. There's a bit of a not wink. There's a bit of a smile. There's a bit of banter or whatever, and you sort of build up to it. Of course, the only risk with that strategy is that suddenly she changes her job and you never see her again. But it, but in general, um, if you if you think it's likely you're going to see her again at some point, I, I in those situations I don't go in for the close immediately. I prefer to just give it a few goes, like you say, just to build up your value a little bit. Mm -hmm. Yep. And so I have something I don't probably haven't seen. I don't know if you've seen this on my channel, uh, Troy, but I, I, I call it the seduction matrix. It's um, I borrowed a little bit. So Mis mystery, I'll give him the credit on this part. He had that he, he had come up with, you know, the idea of between tension and comfort, you know, that a girl like is tension is where attraction builds, but you mm. have to offer enough comfort that you don't, you know, scare her away or, you know what I mean? Make, make uh, like too much tension is a bad thing. So he always, always balancing and, and that push pull was between tension and comfort. Well, what I observed too, though, is that it, it, there's more, obviously more variables than that. And one, to, another one to track, if you picture like, you know, the vertical access being sexually opened or closed. So a girl is working, for example, at a diner or at a bar or something She's in work mode and she's usually pretty sexually closed because she gets hit on a lot if she's hot. Yeah. And so she sexually closes herself and she's not that interested. So you actually have to build and oscillate on the comfort side to get her to be more sexually open to you. She has to build some familiarity and comfort with you. A little bit of tension too. So you're not so much on the comfort side that you're harmless. You know what I mean? And that you're friend zoning yourself but just enough of the comfort or it's still mostly comfort, mostly indirect 
till she starts to open up. When she starts to open up to you and see you as a sexual object, then you can convert that into a little bit more tension. And now she starts getting some investment and then boom, you close, right? Yeah, that is that is a really interesting point actually as well. And that is something that I operated when I was, um, there was a strip club in London. I used to live right in the center of London and there was a strip club there. It was a really old seedy kind of place. And um, I just found it really fascinating, like going in, I mean, obviously the hot girls but you know just looking at the and, and i don't i don't recommend people hang out in strip clubs because it's not really but but you know i was just going in there <laughs> kind of hanging out whatever um yeah and, and over a period of time i got to know um quite a few of the people i kind of got to know a lot of the girls by sight i got to know the manager and all this kind of stuff and then you just rock in for a drink or whatever and just you know kind of shoot the shit and what happened as a result of that is i ended up actually getting with a couple of the girls and nice. it was it, it's exactly and and so this it, it wasn't what I would have expected necessarily before, but I actually wrote an article about this, and it's exactly what you're talking about because if you people write books about strip club game, I've actually got a book about it myself. But if you yeah. rock I used up to run in, that shit too, <laughs> yeah, you, but, 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 <laughs> yeah. and uh, of course, of course, you can you know there are there are things you could do for sure, but I mean if yeah. it, generally speaking, if you rock up to the strip club. And you just hit on the girl. It's it's probably not going to happen in right. any cases. I mean, maybe it, well, I don't know, man. I mean, it depends. Uh, maybe you've got some great techniques, but in in my experience, it, it, or you, you look like super, like you just got out of prison. Like I well, can pull that off a little bit, and sometimes it works. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Strippers um, like go for that guy, you know? So yeah, of course. Yeah, I have like well, a stripper magnet on my body. I think just the way. Well, I you might. Well, maybe maybe it works. <laughs> Well, this could be one of these things. Maybe it works better for you than for me. But I mean, what what I found strangely was that actually mm -hmm. getting getting to know them a little bit more, which would seem like yeah. a no no. Um, and no, then no. when they saw, and then because they started to see me as less of a customer, it was just oh, there's that guy. That's he right. comes in, he did blah blah yeah. blah. And then that's when it started to to work. Yeah, yeah, dude. So I don't know if this matches with what you have in your course, but like, so for me, um, it it was very rare that I would just have. I would not, I was never like direct on strippers because they're so they're getting so much thirsty attention and yeah. that that's exactly right. Like I, I learned this actually really young, even before I knew like anything about like that much about pickup and, and Evo psych and some of the stuff I picked up on later, like I used to run strippers and I, all I knew was that, okay, if I can differentiate myself from being a customer, then there can be something like there can be another connection and we could go out and yeah, I, I have to, I have to be a sexual object for her and not a customer. I That's didn't know any, yeah. I didn't know anything. I just knew that like at the time. Yeah. So I would go, when I would go, I would be, I'd hang out at the bar. I wouldn't go anywhere. I wouldn't, I wouldn't attempt to do anything with the girls. I would just hang out and BS yeah. with my friends or guys that were there. And then girls would come up to you to try to make you a customer. And then I would just BS with them like they were a normal person and yes. didn't sexualize them at all. And yeah. then, and then that would get, make them feel like, well, why isn't this guy sexualizing me? You, you know, so that now they start pining for me, which mm. in the hypergamous brain made them see me as better than she is. And then yeah. add some muscles and tattoos and a bit of an attitude too. So now it's like, Oh, like this guy is something else. Right. Yeah. And yeah. then, then she might ask me for a dance or you want to go dance or whatever. I just pull her in tight and I would say, listen, I'm not one of your customers, but go around there, go make some money for me and then come on back and hang out. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And I just would pull that one. And then so she'd be like, Oh, okay. All of a sudden I'm this girl's pimp. Now she goes around <laughs> and she does her thing. She comes back and I'm like, how'd you do good. I'm like, awesome. And yeah, then we yeah, would just yeah, go yeah. back to BSing. And that's how I'd close on these girls. They were very, yeah. a lot of them are very toxic though, but yeah, yeah, yeah of course. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I mean, that's the key. That, that is the key. The key thing is don't pay for dancers. That's gotta be, <laughs> that's gotta be the key thing. You never pay for dancers because that just, that just immediately puts you into customer frame. So you never do that. Um, but I've got a friend actually over here. He, he actually, he's, he actually works with mystery. He's actually with mystery's wingman, right? A guy oh. called, right called, guy called Rob Baxter. Um, he's out in Mexico with mystery at the moment, but, um, very sort of like cheeky chappy sort of, yeah, all right, darling, kind of, kind of guy. Um, uh, very, very good. 
um, obviously to be winging with mystery and teaching boot camps with him. Um, but he's really good at this stuff. He's really, really good at, at strip club stuff. And he does exactly what you're talking about. But he would literally, he's 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 there talking to his friends. The girl comes over. She's like, hey, you want that dance? Or, you know, whatever they say. Because <laughs> um, they're all like Russians and Eastern Europeans over here. Right. Um, and um, and uh, he... Um, and he would like bullshit with her. And he's got some little routines he does talking about, oh, who's got the coolest shoes? And she's like, I have the coolest shoes, you know, and all, and all of this sort of bullshit. And then he just pushes her away and says, oh, you see that dude over there? I reckon he's um, I reckon he's a good, uh, you know, a good cash, uh, a, a good earner. Why don't you go and talk to him? We're busy, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, and yeah. Um, it's, it's exactly the same thing, you know, because when mm -hmm. you put yourself in that customer frame, then you're finished because then you're just another one of the chodes in the bar. Exactly. Yep. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So I'll pivot a little bit because we were going to talk about, I mean, I titled it openers, but really, I don't know what I'm talking about when I get on Friday. We're just going to see what happens. Um, yeah, yeah, but yeah. Uh, talk a little bit about openers. So um, I don't, if you want to share with us some of the ways that you would open like on chicks in different domains, it'd be, well, it'd be cool to hear. Yeah. Well, actually, um, interestingly enough, I do tend to go direct quite a lot. Okay. Direct yeah. has actually been my preferred sort of go-to for a number of, for quite a long time. Um, particularly in the daytime. And mm. the reason I was just inspired by a lot of these dudes, uh, there's a guy called Tom Torero. There's a guy called Krauser. These people who, who became prominent talking about, about day game and blah, 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 back in the sort of like earlier, earlier 2000s. And um, their model, which is called the London day game model, although operated all over the world, um, they would, they would start generally with a compliment. And yes. mm -hmm. so, and I was like, I was like, okay, well, all right, let's, let's give this a go. And so generally speaking, what I do now is I will walk up to her and just say, Hey, just saw you, you look really cute, but, and then kick in with something else like, Oh, but it's a little bit suspicious the way you're standing around outside this shop or, but there's something oh, a little bit. Suspicious. That's pretty cool. So, all right. So you kick off. And the reason yeah. I do that, the reason I do that is because I think the compliment sort of grounds the, the, the approach. It's like, you're not sure. there to be mates with her. You're not there to ask for directions. It's like, look, you're cute. That's why I'm talking to you. Um, so I generally do something like that, but I will then try to pull the compliment back a bit. So I'm not being like too simpy. Um, uh, that's good. But it, it, it kind of depends on the scenario, right? Because of I, I, I will also sometimes go indirect, particularly if like, say you're at, say you're on a plane and you're going to be sitting next to the girl for four hours. You don't want to like, if you kick off direct immediately and <laughs> she blows you out, it's going to be an awkward flight. Right. So, <laughs> you know, and yeah. um, if it's in a store or something like that, I tend to go a little bit more indirect. Like I'll talk about what she's looking at or what's happening around us or something like that. Um, but I do quite like, going direct, even in nightclub situations. And then people would maybe disagree, but just going up and saying, hey, you're cute, you know, because it's no BS. It's just like, this right. is what it is. I'm taking my shot. If you want to blow me out, blow me out. Fine. I don't care. Sure. Um, but there is also that sort of thing that's a little bit in between. And you probably, maybe you do this, where yeah, you're making the approach and it's indirect. So maybe you're talking about what she's wearing or what's happening in the street or something, but it's also very clear from your eye contact and your vibe that right, actually you're interested you're, you're, in you're, more you're, than... hit, you're hitting on it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Of course. Yeah. So yeah. for me, that's, that's good. That's, I really like how you did that. Um, that's really cool. Cause so like I, my, my issue with starting off with compliments, it's not that it doesn't, it's bad or doesn't work because obviously a lot of really good day gamers have been getting it to yourself included myself included. I don't even consider myself in that category. Um, I've gotten had good success with starting off that way, but I look at that as like, I call it the hail Mary pass, which is an American football, basically like throwing the ball down the field as far as you can and hoping someone catches it for the touchdown. If mm. you're quickly meeting a girl and you're never going to see her again and she's hot, it's like, screw it. Hey, you looked hot. Just thought I'd come over, say hello. Boom. There's that. Hope she catches it. Oh, you know, blown out. Cool. No, that's fine. Doesn't matter. Or bam, she's in there. It works. And so the reason why that can work is for all the reasons you said. And also like when you come up to a girl, like when a guy like, uh, uh is it, um, or 
James Tusk? Is that his name? Yeah, yeah, Tusk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So I, I, because you've mentioned him before, yeah, like is, yeah. is him being a pretty cool dude. So I was like, ah, check out a couple of his infields or something, and they seem pretty genuine. Yeah, I mean, he's, a lot of his infields are garbage, man, and I know they're fake, but he seemed good. Like he seemed like yeah. they were pretty real, real deal. And um, yeah, he's a solid he's, guy, and it's very natural, isn't it? It's not fucking yeah. around. It's just very. He goes in, he has the conversation. It's it's very very. You know, you can tell right. it's it's the genuine stuff. I'm actually doing a boot camp with him. I should tell. Oh, cool. I should plug. I should plug this quickly. Yeah, plug it. Well, May, right May the, we're talking about him. May the twentieth. <laughs> to yeah. may the 23rd in london we're doing a boot camp we've only got two spots left we're only taking on four guys it's going to be 20 hours worth of training uh thursday friday saturday sunday just me and james we've got two guys on board we're taking on another cut two guys and that's it so if you're nice. interested in that hit me up try at real just drop me an email and we can we can chat about it but yeah he's a cool guy yeah, man, that's that's cool. And and so like when he he comes up, and this is not a, a, a nag on him or anything, but because I've used it before too. If I'm coming from a position of power, meaning a parent status and even SMV, right? So he uh James comes up to somebody, he's six foot, what, three, you know, he's yeah. good looking dude, good voice, and then he says, Hey, and he starts with a compliment she it's it's demonstrating a lot of confidence and the compliment could be seen as from from the wrong person as trying to qualify to her which will send the wrong message to the hypergamous brain that you know mm. what i'm better than this guy but because he's so clearly better than she is i guess is the best way to say it from an SV standpoint that's not how it ends up being perceived when when she goes for it now yeah. when girls don't go for it or confuse it's because by just doing a dead a dead compliment with no other qualifiers like a neg or something like seems a little suspicious though the way you're standing outside the store for example um what ends up happening is like it's a it can be seen as a qualifier to her so a lot of guys i'm coaching um they might not have uh you know james tusk you know looks or whatever so they got to do it a little different you know what i mean or they're just going to get a lower they'll get some 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 hits but it's going to be a, a much uh you know uh, lower what do you call it uh, uh hit rate you know, close hit hit rate yeah, yeah. if you will well, well that so, is, yep that is yeah. the problem with uh direct and actually i think it's um i was reading this somewhere i, th I think it was possibly the art of seduction which obviously i've banging on about for, for for years now um mm. but it may even refer to casanova but i think i think it, it it's basically overall Generally speaking, the, the greatest seducers that have ever existed, the, the consensus is it's better to be to go indirect. Use the terminology, obviously, back in the, the, 18th, the 17th century or the 18th century. But yeah. it, like going indirect is, is, is better because mm -hmm. when you go direct, and I'm now arguing against my, myself, but when you go indirect, <laughs> when you go direct, it is pretty much one shot, right? You know, hey, yeah. you're cute. And she's like, oh, uh, and she's like, fuck off. And that's it. You know, like you haven't like, so, so you are, and, and like you say, you are relying somewhat on your value, you know, or yes. what she perceives your value to be off the bat. So obviously if she likes you, if she finds you attractive, great. Right. But if she doesn't, there is that chance that she's yep. just going to say, okay, thanks. Bye. And then walk off. Yeah. Or she's like, fuck off. Or, 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 or so, sorry to swear on your channel. No, I don't <laughs> um, it, YouTube but, but, doesn't like me anyway. So no one's going to watch this. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but, but yeah, so that, that is the counter argument to what I've been saying. Whereas indirect does allow yeah. you to showcase your personality a little bit more and to sort of warm things up. But I think that sweet spot still is somewhere in the middle. You know? I agree with that. Yeah, hundred percent. So my my way of doing it is based on calibration to the social situation, and it's I think you're talking and alluding uh, to a lot of that now too, because you're like, well, if I'm going on a plane and just going direct would and getting blown out, now I have an awkward flight the rest of the time. Probably not the way that I would engage this. Maybe I'll engage indirect and then go direct at the end. So if I do get blown out, I'm not having an embarrassing. Uh, situation for having to be in this flight with this person. So that's yeah. a good example. And that's about how I handle it too, is I calibrate it to the situation and their reactions. So even in like a day game scenario, if I get an IOI or in indicator of interest, and I'm talking really subtle though, some of these indicators of interest or choosing signals are so subtle that the girl might not even know she's doing it. Yeah. Like 
it's just like a, a, a double take glance, like real quick, like, oh shit. Or, you know what I mean? Or she, I'll watch her eyeballs. If she, her eyes trace my outline, you know what I mean? And trace my mm -hmm. body that th those are really small things. If when I, it, when I start to approach her, I'm moving towards her. If her body sort of orients a little bit, those can be some things too. Like even like if I notice any like small choosing signals, <clears throat> I can go really direct. And when I go direct, I might just go something as simple as, Hey, how are, how are you yeah. doing today? All right. Yeah. Something yeah. that simple. And if she's interested, she's going to like help me and engage in that conversation. And so then I'll pivot to, you know, something of interest and relevance to her that can allow us to get into maybe fantasy discussion rather quickly. Things like geography, yeah. uh, things like travel work is a little bit less of that, but work is a good DHV opportunity if you have a decent job, but I kind of stay away from work a little bit. Um, stick to leisure, um, yeah. even her look or nationality or style. That can be mm. something, you know, and so I'll pivot right to that. But um, I've even gone as strong as in a bar scenario or something where I'm really getting looked at. I'll approach dead on like a predator <laughs> eye contact until she drops her eyes, create a ton of tension. And then I'll just say, hey, yeah, I noticed you noticed me, but that's OK, because I noticed you, too. Uh, nice. What's your name? Nice. Yep. And I and I see see how my my voice too. You know, and you and you probably talk about this a lot. Your tonality, how much that matters. Like mm -hmm. I drop my voice an octave, and it's a seductive, calming. You know what I mean? Voice when I come up to her. So mm -hmm. what I'm doing is creating a lot of tension, but my voice is also calming her a little bit with this kind of a tone. You know. Yeah. And then it and then I'll pivot to hey, let's grab a drink. Like. Well, oh yeah, cool. Whatever. Like, you know, yeah. <laughs> and, yeah. and then it's like lightens it up. And then now I'm in that push pull. She was sexually open. And so that's when it's, it's her sexual openness or closed, how open or closed she is matters too. The girl's in a grocery store looking at her list and in a hurry, she's not really sexually open at that moment. You know what I mean? So if I come up to her and go, Hey, you look cute. You know, I just want to come over and say hello. She's going to be like, bro, <laughs> like I'm in a rush, get away from me. I could be the, the hottest dude on earth. So I might come over and direct and be like, all right, you, you see, you seem like you're buried in your list. I don't mean to take up much of your time. See, that's a time constraint, but yes. I am not, I'm a, I'm a boy and boys aren't good at grocery store stuff. Help me. I'm looking for this thing. Can you, you know, and she might, then maybe she like laughs or, oh yeah, it's over there or whatever. Then I'll be like, you, see, you seem like you're real serious. Are you uh, cooking for a family of 12 or yeah. <laughs> you got a party you're doing or, you know what I mean? Then I just kind of small talk engage her. That's a bit in, indirect. And then she calms down, relaxes. Maybe she was, you know, intense on her little thing, but maybe she starts to relax a little bit and create a little comfort. Now I can oscillate back into some tension and maybe then mm. go, you know what I mean? Th yes. Then maybe the, the end of that thing go, you know what though? You seem actually pretty cool. And you're, 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 yeah. you're actually, you're pretty cute too. So why don't we, uh, why don't we get together? And I'll just hand mm. her my phone. Yes. Oh, and it has opened a text. Just hand her my phone. Just be like, put it in there. I'll give you a call next week. Yeah. Do a number yeah. 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 Well, that is um, actually, there's so many things in that, 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 that I could pick up on. I mean, just in terms of just saying hello. I mean, certainly if you're, if you're recognizing, indicators of interest if she flicks a look at you or something so i've actually got a, an infield uh we shot a while back and i was walking down the street i see this pretty cute girl she's wearing a black dress for some reason even though it's the beginning of the daytime and i'm just walking next to her and the opener i just i look at her she looks at me she smiles and my opener is is hello i just say hello and she goes oh hello and then we're just in the conversation and right. and the reason that that works is because well it, it's you don't have to verbalize it because she, 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 you, you both know what the deal is, right? She was interested in me. I was interested in her. You just start talking. You don't need to go into like, Oh, I think you're cute because it's already understood. Um, mm -hmm. There's another point actually to this as well, though. There's a guy called Steve Jabber, a British guy. He's got a, he's got a date, uh, like a YouTube channel talking about game and stuff. I don't really know him particularly well, but um, I've had mm -hmm. some, a, a few texts and, you know, DMS and stuff, but um his whole thing is about what he calls forcing um, IOIs. Mm, and yeah. Okay. What, okay. What he's, what he's, and again, I don't, you know, I haven't studied his stuff in depth, so I don't know the techniques he's talking about and stuff. But basically, what he's saying is, you go out and about, 
you are effectively going around scanning, creating eye contact with girls. This is how I practice. Mm -hmm. So yeah. that she's then, you know, returning the eye contact. And then the approach becomes warm, right? Yes. So you're, you're sort of... Mm -hmm. So you're either going out and being very scanning for IOIs, which is always an important thing to do, or you're actually almost like pushing you're them. Creating it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's very good. Which well, sounds, that's like, the sounds like what you're doing. And then all of this, yes. like what you say on the approach and everything, it all kind of becomes less important, right? Right, right. Exactly. Especially in, in places like, well, night game or where you're actually at a bar, restaurant or coffee place, like yeah. making eye contact, little smiles, you know, there, she starts to build a, familiarity with you jim too this is a good one like yeah. if i jim i won't even uh, approach till i see a girl uh, uh, unless she's really showing strong iois i won't even yeah. approach or do anything till two or three encounters mainly because i'm working out there yeah. and i'm focused on that not women to be honest but you know like i'll see her smile whatever give the, the nod or whatever a little little wink or something she'll be like oh hey whatever you know and then you start to build familiarity and then when you do talk to her, it's, it's, it's warm. Um, yeah. it's, it's a sales thing too. Like, so a lot of, I had a lot of background in, um, you know, performance psychology and as it was related to uh, persuasion and sit and even look at sales and marketing yeah. where like there's when somebody has an interest already. All right. And then there's where you have to create an interest where yes. it didn't exist before. And that's yeah. a lot of times when a girl is sexually closed, she has an interest in having a good sexual experience and sexual partner. But in that moment, she's not, you know, she's not thinking about those things. So you yeah. have to create or manifest that interest where it didn't exist before she was into her grocery list. Then I approached her, engaged her. It was kind of comical, made a connection. She starts telling me about what she's up to now she's invested. I'm telling her about what I'm up to. Now there's a connection there. I'm created an interest where there wasn't one before. Mm. And then, you know, and then maybe I'm saying like something like, wow, it sounds like you really uh, could use a little bit of adventure. Maybe, you know, you're into yeah. the same old stuff right now. Yeah. You know, cause she's made talk about how busy she is. She's doing this, doing that and the other. Yeah. It sounds like you could use a little bit of an adventure or a break, you know, she went, yeah, maybe like a vacation. I go, well, how, and I might say, well, how about a mini one? Why, why are you, how, how much risk are you open to? Well, what do you mm -hmm. mean? Let's go grab a drink after this uh, store trip here. Just a quick one, 30 minutes and BS for a little bit. Yeah. How about grabbing it, grabbing a drink with a stranger? Uh, that might be, um, might, yeah. might be the, the, the escape you need for the day, huh? And like something like that. And, and so like, yeah, it's just calibrated the situation. I created an interest where it wasn't there before. And yeah. now we're, we're moving. Because, because otherwise it's like, you're just selling to customers who are, are already want to buy the product effectively. It, which right. Is the, right. It's, but, but there's a couple of, so Ian in the chat is saying, um, if you spend mm. five minutes being direct with 10 women, rather than 50 minutes being indirect with one, you'll save time and at least guarantee one success. And then um, he says, I don't have a lot of time to be indirect. So I prefer five to 10 minutes. He prefers going direct for that, and that and that was that's basically been my philosophy because I'm sort of like you got I got to that point where mm. I'm like, do, do you know what? I'm just going to go for high volume of approaches, burn through it, um, and and that's well, why I that's why I generally yeah. go, and also as well, Cold Steel says one thing that directly proves you're an alpha male is to oh sorry okay, he's making a slightly different point okay ignore that yeah but, but well, yeah so, I, so yeah real quick though I say to to that point. I'm not talking about going indirect for 50 minutes. Like that's crazy. Yeah, I'm talking yeah, yeah. about like the initial, like for example, grocery store example. I've done this like a million times. I, I do the thing where I don't know where I'm going. Help me out. She helps me out. I make a comment of, so you're doing just regular shopping or you got a big party you're uh, planning for. And when am I invited? You know, make a joke mm -hmm. about it, right? Make a connection. She tells me a little bit about that. I go, so shopping in the middle of the day, what kind of, what kind of career allows you with that kind of freedom? So I pivot to, you know, career. She's like, oh, well I do. I don't know. Data entry, blah, blah, blah. I got the day off. I'm like, yeah, cool. You got the day off or whatever. It seems, you seem pretty busy ordinarily. Yeah. I've been totally busy. So it feels good to have a day. I'm like, yeah, it does. Well, yeah. you know, then I might, then I might go into that close right there. Like, yeah, well, you know, it seems like you can use a little bit of adventure. How about a yeah. drink after, uh, after this trip? Let's do it. Let's do about 30, 30 minutes of day drinking before you go about your day, you know, and just f close right there. You know, if I'm getting the IOIs and that connection was built, it's a five to 10 minute conversation that started off indirect, led to a close 
or yeah. start it off, you know, start off indirect. And maybe she goes, hi, ah, you know, that sounds good, but I do got some other things I want to attend to. I hand her my phone. No problem. Just put it in there. We'll do something next week. And yeah. then she puts her phone number in. I've had that happen where they blow They blow out the like little rejections too. I think guys get too caught up in it. Like I'll, I'll, I'll do an immediate close right there. Let's go get a drink right now. And she'll blow that one out. That's fine. But then boom, here's my, you know, you do a phone number close or even like, that's cool. Let's do it some other time. Are you on Facebook or Insta? Mm. That's a good one too, because if your Facebook or Insta is done the right way, then you're going to have high SMV presented on your Facebook or Instagram. They'll see pictures of you. They'll see the stuff going on and that'll give them a chance to go, oh, maybe I should go hang out with this dude. Then when you hit her up in the DMs, she goes out with you. But yeah, I'm not talking about 50 minutes of friend zoning yourself. I'm talking... <laughs> That's not uh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> he might have been he might have been exaggerating a little bit there but 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 yeah. there's there is one point to make i probably because yeah. of your like demeanor and you you know the way you look and everything it, yeah. and, and just because of the way you are as well it's yeah. probably likely that these girls they just intuit that you are you know you're a dude you you, you know you're a, you've got that sexuality about you the yes. problem one problem might be for guys who've got less of that Mm. And they go up to her and they're like, oh, which do you think is the best pastor or something? And it, it just and then she could literally either think that you're just being friendly and she yes. and you kind of get friend zone, or um, even if she does kind of get that you're hitting on her, she can use that as an excuse and be just right. like and then just make the conversation very friendly and then it and then sort of bin you off. So the, mm -hmm. the key mm -hmm. thing is that the guy needs to somehow develop that inner sexuality that they can just tell through your eye contact, the way you're looking at them and everything that, you know, that's what's really going down. That's a very good point. That's a very good point. And that's why, absolutely. Cause that's some, that's why some things are going to work better for some guys than another, which is why I like having different approaches and opinions to certain things. When I'm working with yeah. a client, I'm, I'm playing off of what they got going for them. SMV too. Yeah. You know what I mean? Uh, for sure. Well, um, yeah. yeah. Well, I became, I became a lot better at, um, sort of exuding sexuality and it was something that yeah. took me it took me a long time i certainly wasn't right out the gate like that you know when i was 20 or something but but because underneath it all i'm a bit of a dirty dog you know <laughs> like deep down yeah right i, I found i was i found i was able to like communicate that um yeah. not not verbally that's but but just and she can sense it on you and that in is your undertone yeah, yeah that's very building yeah. that tension with your voice and your body language that's what's really important like where, where you exude sex even when you're talking about ordinary topics that's why yeah. like a lot of what i'm helping guys with is getting a really strong internal game because when your internal frame and game is really strong then you can exude sexual sexuality with with a level of confidence right yeah the guy has questions about himself on the inside or he's not quite stable or he doesn't quite you know have himself worked out on the inside then doesn't have that strong mental framework that's going to be really hard for him to do so yeah that's a big part of what i help build I was, guys with you know i was yeah. watching a I was watching a reality show um the other night and there's uh basically this it was like these celebrities or you know celebrities going out on dates with people and there's this dude over here called pete wicks who's a, a sort of quite short actually not particularly not big quite skinny but but loads of tattoos long hair kind of famous over here um anyway he was on a date with this girl and this this guy he's you know he's a he's a bit of a dirty dog right i mean he's <laughs> he's 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 been around the block a few times anyway he's with this girl and they're just sitting there having a drink and she's looking at him and she's saying your eyes are just so sexual. Your eyes are just oozing sex. And yeah. they weren't even having this, like, our, you know, they were just talking about chit-chat. Mm. And she was like, oh, I can't stop looking at your, your lips. There's just something about you that's so sexual. And right. this girl was, like, li literally almost wetting herself in, in front of him. And, you know, and, and, and it's that intensity. If you can bring through that intensity, then yes. it, a lot of the work is done for you. 100% dude totally agree and that's why that eye contact and calibrating your voice calibrating your motions like your physical you know how you how you're physically behaving in the conversation some people I'll literally work with them on tonality and pacing with their voice because instead of you know talking where you're calibrating and pacing what you're saying, like what I'm doing right now in this conversation with you, this is how you can build sexual attention, talk about literally nothing with a girl. Yeah. 
versus some guys like, well, they'll be talking like this and well, I'm not really sure. And uh, well, what do you think about that? You see what I mean? Like it's more of an erratic voice pattern, you know, mm. and that makes a huge difference. And and then body language too, like I'm taking up space. I'm making deliberate movements, but I'm not there's see like right now I'm doing with my right hand, I'm just doing it on purpose to demonstrate. It's a very subtle, but deliberate movements with my hand right now. And so when I go to touch a girl or something like to build a little Kino, it's very deliberate. And yet very subtle and very yeah. comforting because I'm not like, ha 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 ha. You know what I mean? I'm like, you know, like, like, yeah. uh, like some people we've seen with nervous laughter and, uh, and erratic <laughs> body <laughs> movements. Yeah. <laughs> okay. yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that's, but, that's, yeah. yeah. And getting into, getting into her space a bit as well. Right. right. Even if you're, even right. if you guys are sitting next to each other at the table, but just, just like leaning or, or um, leaning forward we could maybe argue if that's i, I know what you but, mean. But, but but like just getting into her space not being afraid and, and also mm -hmm. touch touch of course as well like breaking oh, down yeah. these these barriers yep yep that's a really cool man we we could uh if you, if you have to go let me know i can go a little bit longer five minutes or so but I, yeah <laughs> unfor <laughs> unfortunately unfortunately i do have to to go because i'm actually doing another show over on my channel um and oh, I've got yeah, guy, yeah 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 I okay, got the guy cool, lined man. up, but I would love to stay longer because it's really we're getting into some interesting stuff here. I know we can just do it in other other times too, man. I'll have you on it repeatedly. You're, you're the you're the real deal, man. I want to tell my audience that this guy Troy Francis here knows the stuff. Like, Thank you. I, it's it's yeah, it's awesome. Like I I can tell I'm at a le like a level where. I can tell when a guy is getting the results and knows the stuff and is no BS. There's so much BS out in the pickup community and stuff and guys who claim or guys that are claiming that there's BS out there and are doing BS themselves. Yeah. They're fabricating receipts. They're fabricating, you know, stuff. And it's just, it's just nonsense, you know? And yeah. you can tell when a dude is genuine. I feel like at least I'm at that point. Where I, that's one thing I'm kind of good at. And I always been able to tell since we started working together with rule zero, that you're a genuine guy, you know, you're, you, you know, there's no BS about what you do you, you, and you know, what works and you, tr you teach guys, you know, what works and you're constantly, developing your game and getting better too just like i am so it's yeah. a it's just a testament to you man like i think you're doing good stuff out there and it was an honor to have you on you know mate so, honor to be here honor to be yeah. here thanks ever so much for having me mate yeah yeah cool well we'll end it i know there's a lot of questions in the in the chat that i didn't get to so sorry dudes like uh hit me up uh next friday <laughs> we'll answer some good stuff <laughs> All right. So, uh, and actually, by, I'll just say as well, by the way, Rule Zero and Paul, obviously, mm -hmm. hopefully you'll be, be along, but it's actually on my channel tomorrow. So oh, look okay, out cool. I will be there. Yes. Good yes, stuff. Yes. So look, look out for that. It's going to be tomorrow on my channel, 1130 a.m. All right. And stuff is in. I put your your website in, in, the, in the description of the video. So if you guys want to, there's two seats open for a, a what, what is it? A long a workshop with some experts. It's like. It's a yeah. training program with me and James Tusk, London, 20th Dude, that'd be sick, man. That'd be really cool. Hell yeah. It's going to so be awesome. You guys can travel and do it. Do that. Troy's got books on this stuff. He's got blueprints. He's got stuff for you guys. Like, uh, these, I'll get these questions of who should I go through? Who should I go to for pickup and game? Who's good out there? Well, fuck. Troy's good out there. Go to his website and pick up his stuff. <laughs> and then ask me questions on Fridays or something on my channel after you're executing some things. You know, it's much better good stuff. that way. All right, brother. <laughs> Thanks again for having me. So talk to you later. Right. See you later. See you later, later. man. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye-bye.